Hello and welcome to Conversation with Ronan, guys. Uh, I'm your host, Ronan Unchained, and it's another addition to this podcast. Now, a lot has happened within the past week. Different topics to uh, hit out out of the ballpark, and um, let's get right into it, shall we? Uh, the first one that strikes me, being the big Star Wars fan that I am, is that recently I think it was it was Adam Driver who plays Kylo Ren. He was I think he was promoting his n- new film called Midnight Special. I think so. Not hundred percent sure. But anyway, someone asked him about Episode Eight. And uh, he replied saying it's similar to how The Empire Strikes Back has a different tone. For that people always go, oh, it's dark, but I don't know that it necessarily is. Why not? He also added that that Ryan jo- that the director Ryan Johnson for Episode 8 trusts that his audience is ready for nuance and ambiguity. And that he's not dumbing anything down and whatnot. So, I could imagine over the past week, Star Wars geeks and fans and whatnot going like, Oh my gosh, are they going to really do Empire or not? I think when it comes to to, uh, to trilogies nowadays, I think sort of follow the same model. And uh, Star Wars as well, that it should go deeper. Um, I will only speak for myself, but I could, I'm willing to bet that a lot of fans... Could agree with me that we fell in love with the new characters. Uh, we wanted to know more. And like again, like I said, episode 7 answered a lot of questions. And yet rose and left us with a lot of questions to still still be, you know, still, still ask one out. So uh, the one thing we could say is that, that he, didn't, uh, he didn't ruin anything one out. We, could all, we, we should be expecting this. From episode eight, but at the same time, in my own opinion, don't follow it shot by shot by shot by shot by shot. One thing that I heard from people that liked episode seven was that yeah, it's a great movie, but it's basically a new hope. And I would defer that yes, there's similar elements, but it's totally different in terms of how it starts off. And I'm not just saying, but you know, they have to find another droid, but of different reason why uh, excuse me different reason why the main character Ray uh, decides to leave and at the beginning spoilers wants to come back that her parents left her we don't know who her parents who her parents are hopefully in episode 8 that question is answered and I think it's cool that we're hearing the, the title Empire Strikes Back being connected with Episode 8. Even though I trust and hope that Ryan Johnson, the director, won't follow the same model. But yet, keep that tone the same. Keep it tone. And I am... Oh damn, I'm, I'm going to probably get hanged by this, but why not? But Ryan Johnson, even though it's an impossible task, but you might as well... Give us something more darker and more memorable. And I can't believe I'm saying this. Then Empire Strikes Back. You have that chance. Now it is a slim, slim, slim chance. I'm telling I guys before, before whoever you know whoever listened to this before you bash me out or dislike the video or leave me mad comments. I love Empire Strikes Back. Personally, I prefer A New Hope. But I would rather use lines from Empire Strikes Back. Just more memorable lines and whatnot. You know, I love you, I know. Or, no, I am your father. I get it. But, knowing that it's been 30 years, approximately, yeah, approximately over 30 years since Empire came out, Ryan Johnson can carefully, and I say this carefully, Study Empire forwards, backwards, inside out, left or right, corner left, corner right, corner left down, corner right down, and take the good parts about it, twist it, and give us something that we are not forthcoming. We don't want something in a similar way, like you know, I am your father. Twist it, why not? Give us, give us a backbone again, the same way, like, same way you made us feel when spoilers. 
you kill off Han Solo. Now, analyzing it after I saw it, I should have seen it coming, but I didn't think they had the balls to kill Han Solo. You guys do, and I give you credit, but at the same time, how dare you. And to finish this topic off with Adam Driver, I think he is an exceptional actor. Uh, he won over the trust and confidence of fans, including myself. He did a tremendous job doing or uh, performing as Kylo Ren or Ben Zolo. But um, Adam Driver or whoever knows him, if, if you could send this message, you're a good actor. But I fucking hate Kylo Ren. Fucking hate him. That's all I'm going to say. And uh, there was a lot of speculation like, you know, will he ever be redeemed or whatnot? I personally don't think he can unless Leia does it. Leia must do something that hasn't been done yet. She has to use the force. Not feel it. Not be able to like, oh, I felt someone die. Oh, you know, I knew you were my brother. Actually pull something out. Pull like, be like, yes, finally Leia's using a lightsaber. Or she's finally using the force. Only way to redeem Kylo Ren is if Leia redeems him. That's it. No Luke. Just no Rey. Just Leia. And I'm going to leave it like that. <laughs> but I am excited for episode 8. I want to see it now. Now. But yeah. And sticking to uh, movie mediums, and I can't believe this is actually happening. This is just my, guys, this is just my opinion. Been confirmed that Fox has bought the rights to do a action pack adventure film of Stan Lee. Um, this is going to be a very small talk about this topic. I don't want the movie. If it actually does happen, I'm actually going to watch it. Even though I don't want it to happen. I prefer a biopic. And uh, I don't see I don't see what could be intriguing or not. I cannot see intriguing or not. I'd rather see, I'd rather see something like Social Network meets uh, Steve Jobs or Jobs. But for comic book type. No, Show us when, we, when um, uh, Stanley met Jack Kirby or Steve Ditko. Uh... Show show us when he first uh, discovered a uh, Tom McFarland, uh, uh, Jim Lee, uh, Rob Liefeld, uh, all these guys and whatnot. Then show us how uh, the first first few films of Marvel came out and how it was by time eh, going down, going down, and then the reemergence of a uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe and whatnot. Show us something like that, and show us some of his um background stuff that we don't know if. And it's just my only opinion if Stan Lee is actually okay with it. But other than that, uh, I don't get I don't get the premise of this. But uh, but yeah, <laughs> I'll leave it to that. So Stan Lee action adventure movie, don't want it, but I'll watch it if it actually does happen. But I'd rather see a biopic. Now leave it like that. And speaking of Fox, it is it has been confirmed by Brian Singer, the director of. X-Men, X-Men 2, X-Men Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse. That And the, the writer, Simon Kinberg, that Mr. Sinister, the famous uh, X-Men Marvel villain, is going to be in the new and last Wolverine film that Hugh Jackman's going to be in it. Now, they confirmed it, but what it seems to me odd is that I remember that, that after they confirmed it, uh, uh, I forgot his name, I forgot the director's name, uh, Mango or something like that. James Mango, I think. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see. The Wolverine. James Mangold. My bad. Mangold. Mango. Mango. James Mangold denied. Didn't deny. Just he said, Mr. Sinister, who was that? Is that a corny name? He, uh, he uh, apparently denied it. There probably was bad communication between the three gentlemen. And, um... I just keep hearing that the rumor is going on that it might be Old Man Logan's storyline. And as far as I know, I don't recall that villain being in that certain uh, storyline and whatnot. But uh, I do remember Mr. Sinister from the anime series. Well, you know, I grew up in the 90s watching that show. And uh, he wasn't a regular dude, but he um, he did come out. He, did, he made a couple appearances attacking... I think, I don't know if it was towards the anime series or was it the comics that he attacked the Summers family and Jean Grey's family. 
trying to alter their their reality, their destiny, and whatnot. So, <clears throat> um, if it works, sure. Um, if it's something that that studio just wants to throw in at, at in in at it, that is no way to uh, to uh, send Hugh Jack Hugh, Hugh Jackman into the sunset. That is no way, right way, or logical way to send him off. I mean, this is gonna be the gentleman's last time being Wolverine. He should leave with a bang, not poop. So, if anyone that is uh, attached to this project, I say this, and I and I don't speak on behalf of the the fan base because everyone has their own opinion. But in terms of my own uh, expectations, make this film great for the character and memorable for the actor. Okay, send them off into the sunset the way Mr. Jackman deserves. Okay, and. I'll leave it at that, so don't F it up. And uh, we're going to switch it to Marvel for a little bit. Uh, Marvel's Jessica Jones uh, actually won. This sounds That sounds rude. Wow, actually won. No. Proudly, finally Marvel TV show won an Emmy. Uh, Sean P. Callery, the composer, I think was awarded the Emmy. The Emmy for Outstanding Original Main Title Theme Music, which is in the intro for the show, why not? Uh, that's, it's cool. Whenever we get, whenever, oh no, I feel like I work there, why not? <laughs> I, I appreciate it when um, a comic book related medium, whether it's books, whether it's TV show, whether it's film, they get recognized by organizations highly Highly uh, respected organizations like the Emmys or the Oscars. It's cool. It's cool to to like you know look yourself in the mirror and be like, damn, damn these th- these things are recognized by 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 people who give Oscars to best actors, best pictures, best TV shows, whatnot. So you know stuff like this is cool, whatnot. And uh, congrats to the to Mr. Calorie and to Marvel Jessica Jones cast. And um, project uh, Corona, you guys deserved it. It was an excellent, excellent TV show. The music was great. Um, at one point, I actually thought that this this show was better than than Daredevils, but my love for the character of Daredevil was way bigger. But Jessica Jones, she she knocked it out of the park. That show knocked it out of the park, and every element, you know, even music has a big role in it. So, uh, congrats and. Um, Get us another one for the for the for the community for the geek community. Get us another one. But yeah, but that's for just a good announce. Congrats. And returning to DC, uh, idea that I thought would be great and has actually been confirmed that Margot Robbie is gonna be a co-producer or an executive producer on the Harley Quinn spinoff movie. Uh, rumors are flying around left to right. That it's going to be a sort of Thelma Louise type film. That's going to be her teaming up with uh, Poison Ivy. Against other female characters of the DC Universe. Particularly Batman's um, um, city world one whatnot. That include Catwoman. Batgirl and the Birds of Prey. Now I'm all for that. I want something like that. I remember seeing the, the episode in the Batman animated series called... Uh, Harley and Ivy, I think it's called like that. that. Yeah, that Harley dumped Joker, sort of, ran off with a uh, Poison Ivy, and they were basically Thelma Louise, why not? So, I think it's cool. And I remember, I remember that right before Suicide Squad was released, that Margaret was a uh, really attached to the character and wanted to give her her own film, which is rightfully so because she stole, in my opinion, she stole a show. Alongside Deadshot and Suicide Squad, and I want to see more of Harley's Harley's character development, specifically specifically with with Margaret Robbie, why not? So uh, I know that she hired her own writer for the for the film, why not? Uh, I I you know 
I give it 100% support for this film. And um, I hope it uh, it opens different doorways, why not, to, to give... To make this video be like, you know, it's okay to to exploit these characters. That they should be exploited, why not. Catwoman, the Birds of Prey, uh, Bad Girl, Poison Ivy. Let's, you know, like, let's just go for it, why not. As, you know, even, even as much as... The fan, you know, the, the community has spoken out that they should change a lot of stuff, and they have. And I believe with Jeff Johns' collaboration with with uh, heading now the DC uh, extended universe, well, not what's it called, the movie universe, that that's gonna be great. And uh, I just hope that the day comes that you know, yeah, Jeff Johns and Mark Robbie are gonna be producing it, and um, I can't wait to see uh, more details about that. But I am excited for that. Uh, yeah. Harley Quinn. Yay. But yeah, that'll be it for that. Uh, when I first heard about this topic, and the topic I'm talking about is Tom Cruise dealing with the, with, with the, the studio for Mission Impossible 6. The story first went out that they weren't, the studio wasn't sure enough, wasn't sure that they should pay Tom Cruise the amount he wants for Mission Impossible 6. But now it's been it's the done deal. He's he signed up for Mission Impossible Six. Uh, the only thing I can say is that why the hell did it took the studio too damn long to decide whether they should pay him what he wants or whatnot? The man has flown outside of an airplane. He's climbed the tallest building in the world. He's making the studio a lot of money, and the Mission Impossible uh, movie. Movies have been getting better and better and better ever since JJ took over and whatnot. So if you want to keep making money, and we want to keep seeing Mission Impossible movies, I only speak for myself, but I think everyone still, I think everyone could agree that that for the majority, that Ghost Protocol and Rogue Nation were great films, and we want to see more, and that there should be no doubt within the system of the studio to pay Mr. Cruz what he wants. To do another movie. I mean, come on. It's like, uh, it's like not. It's like if they didn't want Harrison Ford for Star Wars. I mean, come on. How dare they? But yeah, but, but, uh, can't wait to see more details about that. And I hope that studios don't think twice when it comes to stuff like this, but more logically, of, you know, well, he's been doing all these excellent stuff. You know, he's been making us money and he's been doing. Stuff that most and I and most actors won't dare to do. So, you know what he wants is fair enough. So, yay for Tom Cruise, Tom Cruise. <laughs> but yeah, and um, I'm gonna be wrapping it up right now with the li this last topic. So apparently, for Rogue One, a Star Wars story, their uh, previous composer of the film had uh, has left the project. And now, Michael Giacchino is going to be composing Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Now, the film comes out in, let's see, October, November, December. So, they have three months. Three months to, to compose the, the score for the film. Uh, I think the only thing I can say is, no problemo. I mean, guys, if no one knows the work that Michael Giacchino has put in, in the film business or any medium in terms of score let's look at his track record <clears throat> here we are he's done call of duty games he's done the incredibles film and game he's done mission impossible 3 he's done uh, ratatouille pixar movie he's done the Star Trek films. I think he did Beyond. Let me see. He's done... What else? Come on, come on, come on. What else? What else he's done? He's done more. He's done... Cars 2. He's done Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol. Yeah, he did Into Darkness. He did... Inside Out. Jurassic World. Yep, he did Star, Star Trek Beyond as well. It's Zootopia. He just completed Doctor Strange. And apart from being booked for Rogue One, he's going to be doing The Incredibles 2. 
and he's been doing the Planet of the Apes film score, the the new the new ones that were not. He did I I think he did a uh, Rise Dawn, and he's doing now War of the Planet of the Apes. So unfortunately, the previous composer he had to leave for I, I think it was scheduling conflicts that the the, the reshoots that they took long. And he couldn't uh, do it within the, the time period that they needed. But the replacement they got, I mean, the, and, and Giacchino we trust. And Giacchino we trust. And I, and I trust in him or not. So I can't wait to hear it. And I hope it blows my hair back off when I hear it. And that's going to be it for this edition, guys. Uh, thank you so much for holding up with me for the past 20 22 minutes and um i'll see you guys in about a week with more stuff to talk about um if you guys like the video hit the like button subscribe for more content post any comments down below if there's any suggestions or is there anything you think i would have missed or something i didn't know about these topics and um uh, yeah bon voyage take care <laughs>